Hey everybody, I'm the last talk of the day. My name is Aurelius Prohaska. Um, this, closing this conference is a real honor. I actually, uh, this is a sequel to a talk I gave at the a keynote address I gave at the 2018 ADC in London. And that was a great, um, a great experience. So I'm glad to be back again. Uh, that talk was also called, called Democratization of Audio Development. And um, I know I have a lot of friends in the audience today who may have seen that talk. And um, I also gave a version of the talk to the Beria Music Tech Meetup. Uh, so some of that is something some of you are familiar with. But if you don't know it, don't worry. I'll get you all caught up in a few minutes. Um, First, let me just define democratization just so we're on the same page. It's just taking a technology and making it available to everyone. Um, obviously, all the presenters today, um, to a certain extent, want to get their ideas out to an audience. So, and we're streaming this to the entire world. So there is, we understand that the need to get information out to people so that they can uh, feel comfortable in their audio creation experience. And... Um, so I think I don't have to tell that to you too much. I think this is a good idea. Um, so let me give you a, a little bit of my backstory to tell you why anyone would want to listen to me about this topic. Um, more or less, I'm here today because I created a, a framework called Audio Kit. All right. All right. Um, yeah, OK. <laughs> um, yeah, and believe me, I see both sides. I think we all have a, a, hate a love hate relationship with all our tools, whether it's our computers, our operating systems, uh, languages that we've chosen, IDEs, for heaven's sakes. Uh, audio frameworks are just another one of those things. And, um, but, you know, my relevant experience is not in, you know, my coding ability per se. It's um, about acting as the steward uh, for AudioKit for the last 10 years. Um, AudioKit may not exist without me, but it would have not grown to, to what it is now if I hadn't adopted an open philosophy of, you know, a, a philosophy of opening the development to everyone. Um, AudioKit is free uh, because I didn't have the qualifications when I started to warrant uh, charging for something that I was creating in this realm. Um, AudioKit is open source, kind of for the same reason. I was hoping to get bug reports and user contributions. Um, but to me, AudioKit is not a framework. It's a community of people, um, all of them I consider friends. Some of them have graduated feeling like family members. And, um, you know, we, you know, from the day when I was just learning about audio development, too, we've grown to a company and we've released... Uh, tons of apps, some of them open source and free, some of them closed source and paid. We've, about, we've released about 20 apps using AudioKit, just AudioKit Pro. Hundreds of people have used it to create their own apps. But just AudioKit Pro is about 20 apps, um, about 2.5 million downloads of synthesizers, and, and I think over $1,000 made. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, an audio kit is a collection of repositories um, with like, I think we have over 10,000 stars on GitHub. Those the repos include some sub audio kits which specialize in a certain type of DSP. And we have a whole collection of use, reusable UI components that anyone can put into their apps. Um, we saw there's a microtonality repo that's all of Marcus Hobbs's work with scales and um, Tonic is a music theory a library that Taylor and I wrote. In fact, in fact all the stuff Taylor has a huge part in um, and uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be possible without him. Um, so, you know, we're, we definitely want to get our tools out to the world. Um, we're, we're, we put a lot of work into that. And uh, I'm just trying to show you that a lot of good things can happen to you when... Well, it, I one slide I forgot to put up here. Someone actually wrote a book about one of our synthesizers. There's a, a book about Synth 1 and how to do DSP with it. Um, so we're all, I think, all framework developers, Juice, everybody. Uh, we're all about getting in our tools into other people's hands. Um, uh, Cycling 74 is this cool rainbow thing they just came out with, and Jules is doing C major. There's a lot of innovation happening. And my mission with this talk was... 
update my previous talk in 2018 to see in the last five years how we're doing with democratization. Um, so I did what a lot of people are doing these days, especially Julius Smith. Um, I asked GPT. Um, in fact, I asked it to write my entire talk. Uh, um, so speaking as me, the creative audio kid, the keynote speaker, blah, 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 um, how are things going? And it did this a few times, and it hallucinated a lot the very first the few times. Um, but eventually, it came up with this answer, which I recorded, and it's pretty good. Um, and I, if I'm just going to like read it to you, I, I don't know. That's probably not very fair to you guys. <laughs> if, I, if AI can write your talk, then you know, you know, why bother? We're, we're humans. We should have more to add. Um, so. I thought, well, maybe AI yeah, could help me see how we're all, we're all doing with audio development from the standpoint of beginners or new users. If, uh, I'm, I was curious, if did we save our own careers by not documenting, documenting audio development well enough? <laughs> or, or did we uh, doom ourselves to not having that tenfold increase in, in productivity that we're, everybody else in other front fields are having? Um, so, yeah, I really feel like the the... The internet, for all its greatness, and I've been doing stuff on the internet for like 30 years, like, it's going to be remembered in history as the training set for AI. Like That's going to be the main thing. All, everything else we thought was so amazing about it, all the relationships, it eh, doesn't matter. <laughs> it was all the trained AI. And uh, so I figured, well, if it's doing all this, it can be used as a uh, measuring stick for how we're doing with audio development. And so and Julius pretty much scooped my talk, uh, just two talks. This might be the fastest response to a talk uh, ever <laughs> in the history of this, uh, um, this conference. But um, my experiment was I was going to try to use ChatGPT to create a siren sound um, in a variety of audio platforms. So... I started my, okay, so I just asked it as a complete beginner. I want to write siren sound. And uh, so it's, it, you know, it, it, it understood what a siren was, and it decided to use Python. Now it's machine language, it's an AI. Of course it's going to do Python because it's, it, it's the language of, of machine learning, right? So, um, and, it, and it created it, worked for fine. Um, but I didn't want to use Python. I wanted to do something that I was more familiar with, so an actual like a tool that was for audio. Um, so I, I started my audio development career using Max MSP. So I asked it to, to create me a uh, siren using Max. And it proceeded to give me instructions uh, on how I would do this in Mask Max. Now, I don't want computers telling me what to do. I think that's exactly what we don't want out of AI. This is telling me, okay, I'm the ruler now. And but, so it eventually did give me some code, but it was very hard for it to write this code and it didn't work. Um, I don't know if it was a hallucination or it also kind of just got bogged down. <laughs> so I, I don't exactly know what was happening there. Um, but like, uh, like Julius was saying, if you have a little bit of inside knowledge, like, or if you can tell us and give it some more information, um, you can guide it along. So I said, you know, that code didn't work, um, but I'm using Max 8, and it says Max 5 patcher. Can you give me something in Max 8 that would work? And so it, again, uh, gave me some instructions, and this is all real time. This is exactly how fast uh, GPT-4 is these days. I almost wanted to do this talk live with ChatGPT, but... Uh, it was too dangerous. Like, it's, it's still too volatile. Um, it, so it gave me this code for, uh, for Max 8, and it did load. Um, and it gave me this. So it did not wire up the boxes properly. Um, interestingly, it, it laid it out as if it were a, a flow from left to right, as opposed to up, up to down, which is the standard for Max. So... It's, I don't think it did a very good job with this. Um, it's, and I wonder if it's, if, if it's, you know, it could be a bad thing for Max because it's, Max is us thinking about how we want sound and then we have to think in a graphical 
graphical you know frame of mind to then that then the computer makes sound for us and i think large language models have a hard time replicating that um and i, I think that's kind of a kind of a fair uh, an, Unfortunate because you know, like I said, I think the Rainbow Project from Max MSP is quite cool, but box line development, at least currently, is not working so well with AI. Um, so I'm, I'm the audio kit guy. Um, I so how 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 will it do creating a siren sound in audio kit? And well, thank you. It's a powerful audio synthesis framework. Yes, I like you AI. The only problem is, and it's kind of flying by here, but I can tell that this was written in AudioKit 4 syntax. ChatGPT is very 2021 centric. Um, so it gave me uh, something that wouldn't work um, if you had the most recent, recent version of AudioKit. Uh, but it's, I had that insider, insider information. I said, that's the wrong syntax. Can you use version five? And it said, sure, which kind of annoyed me because like, why would four would ever be better to five? But maybe there were more versions, more uh, examples online with four. So it got this right. Um, it, it used a timer, which I didn't like. Um, so again, I, used some, I had some insider information. I said, well, I really want you to use something called AudioKit operations to get the siren sound. And... Uh, Again, it's, oh, yeah, yeah, you can, you can do that. Uh, and, and it finally produced the output that I wanted it to produce in the beginning, the one that would have been the best one to do it. But it wasn't, it didn't do it without my insider information with my coaxing, um, which is, you know, that's the, the, the trick here. Um, you know, on the, the day before I gave my keynote in, two, uh, in 2018, Jules announced Soul. So I thought, well, that nice five years later, how, how does ChatGPT do with Soul? And interestingly, so, it sometimes would tell me I can't write in Soul, so here's some pseudocode, and other times it would say, okay, well, here's the, the processor. And um, need, it never worked, but I wasn't sure if that was ChatGPT's fault or uh, just the Soul ID online was not working or something. Um, so I said, well, Jules has moved on to C major. Uh, well, maybe, maybe you can write me something in C major. And uh, not to poke at Jules or anything, but uh, it says we don't know about C major. In fact, sometimes when I would ask it this question, it would say, I think you mean the chord, right? Because uh, that's, that's the context I know a C major in. Um, so, you know... I got the feeling that maybe it's just languages that are older, uh, frameworks that are older, chat, chat GTP, AI, would be better at. So I asked it about C sound. Now, C sound and I have a very complicated relationship. We're kind of divorced. And uh, I, I, I didn't like using it. Uh, I went away from it as soon as I, can, as I could. Um, I, I didn't like that I found a bug in C sound and they said, they won't fix it because it might change some professor's piece that he wrote in C sound from the past and it would just sound different. So it can't compile to the same output. We can't fix that bug. We just, we can document it, but we can't fix it. But to my surprise, ChatGPT not only wrote working code, but it uh, did it almost the same every time I asked. It was very consistent. Uh, so having the, the C sounds, you know, if you like it or don't, I don't, but it's consistent. Um, and it's been there for a long time. So it's been, uh, AI's well-trained in it. So I tried a bunch of other platforms and I'm sorry, I didn't, um, super college is not on here, but I did try it. Um, the, uh, and so I had these like kind of, you know, how was the initial response? How much t tweaking would it help and how consistent was it? And so, like, I don't think anyone really, well, you know, different, different uh, platforms did differently. And, you know, everyone's experience is different. Like, I think the ones that say consistent here, like, AutoKit was consistent but old. Uh, CSound was just consistent but crappy code. And uh, um, the one that I found most interesting, actually, was Faust. Uh, Faust... Uh, not every time, but this time, it came, it 
gave me a very quick description of what a siren was and what it was going to do. And then wrote me in, like almost an even quicker code to do it. And it boiled down my question into a series of inputs and a one-liner about how to do it. And, and, and it was a one-liner that I could also, I could pl plug that code into uh, the online editor. And that's what you guys heard earlier. I actually had this, uh, you can turn up the sound a little bit now. Um, So yeah, you can turn it down now. I, I asked ChatGPT to do something for me. It, oops, sorry, I'll go back to my slides here. And it did it, and I could immediately test it. And so I think that's pretty good. In fact, let me go back to uh, this slide for a second. Um, I found the recipe for success is uh, good documentation for our frameworks, text-centric languages, a stable API, and a quick and easy way to test the output of ChatGPT. So you could, you know, if, like with AudioKit, you'd have to run it in a, a simulator on Xcode. It's a little bit harder than just going to an online editor and pasting it in. Um, so, and uh, to your point too, like there is a, you know, just because ChatGPT is not well trained in our frameworks, I don't see why we can't take that, the large language model, model that it made and train it ourselves on our specific documentation. In fact, I think future versions will, you might be able to say like, uh, go consume the documentation at the C major URL, and then now write me the siren. It doesn't do that yet, but I think that's really a reasonable, uh, probably some we're gonna see, um, I don't know, another 90 minutes of uh, development, we'll probably see that one coming up next. Um, yeah, and the other thing is, you know, in the end, I actually don't necessarily care how the sound is created, especially as the person I was uh, pre pretending to be online. I just wanted to create a siren sound. You know, all the things that we worry about as developers, like dropping flames, glitching, threading issues, um, you know, I kind of feel like all this stuff really should be taken care of by, by AI. Um, and when people program user interfaces, how often do they worry about a pixel on the button they created having a flickering, uh, you know, a flickering pixel or a, or a wrong color? It's just, it's not thought about. Now, it's great to have a conference where we can talk about differential reference counting and uh, logging, real-time logging, but, you know, I think that computers should handle that stuff for us. Um, you know, I spent... I spent 10 years thinking about how humans can tell computers how to make sound. And I'm not alone. A lot of the people who work with Juice and all these other frameworks, they all think about this. How can we tell computers what we want to do with sound? And Jules has done this like three times now with Jules Sol and C major. But in a, and that's over the last 10, 15 years. But now in a short time, AI has learned how to understand human communication with a great deal of subtlety. I'll even say that computers have to do a better job of understanding us than we have of actually understanding even a reasonably sized program um, of any, any kind of complexity. Like, compute, human minds don't read programs very well. We don't know all the, the things that could happen and I'm not the only one saying this. I actually I saw a Lex Friedman podcast with Stephen Wolfram, and he was, he was saying the same thing. So computers are doing a better job of speaking to us than we've been doing to speaking to them. So I'm, I'm almost ready to bet that none of us, none of the current ways we're doing things are going to outperform just writing down in plain language what kind of audio processing you'd like and have AI give you a few options. This is what some people are calling like prompt engineering, but I, I don't think that's giving it enough credit. Um, I think that the value we provide as humans is not to sift through the details, um, but be creative and describe what we need in our own natural language. Thank you.
Any questions we have all night. So anybody wants to ask anything? TJ. <laughs> what value do you think there is, if any, in humans understanding the, something lower level than chat GPT, plain language, in, in terms of expression, you know, and how it informs the art? You know, I think that there will always be uh, a reason to, for people to be pushing boundaries and stuff. But I, I'm hoping that more and more of those details are going to be taken care of. And I, we, do, we do want to be on the cutting edge, and that's how we make profit sometimes, by being slightly faster or slightly better than the next guy. So it's probably, it's not coming like immediately that we won't have any use for us. But on the other hand, like, I, I don't think that we're going to outperform AI in actually understanding how computers work at a very deep level. You know, maybe in five years. Invite me back in five years, ADC, and we'll, we'll see. Um, we probably have somewhat similar backgrounds coming to audio, and like initially not knowing what to do and like learning about it as you go. Uh, by that, I mean not having computer science degree, speaking for myself. Me too. But I have to disagree with you in... Um, letting computer handle all the low-level stuff. I've recently been following KC Moratori videos that talks about CMD um, and just like intrinsics and really, really nerdy stuff. And it makes sense to understand that for a developer, although you might not, uh, same thing with DSP, although you might not even write FFT, like why would you, it's been done. But understanding those principles and just forcing your brain to get there is essential, in my opinion. I then, if, if we don't do that, then we're going to end up with relying on hardware like we do right now to handle all the things and having overly convoluted code. <laughs> That's just my okay. perspective. Well, I mean, I would say there's a difference between understanding some fundamental concepts. I mean, I have spent so much time on the DFT books of yours. <laughs> like, uh, maybe days of, or maybe weeks of time, just really understanding concepts that are important, that are actually fundamental concepts. But uh, low-level details, I don't know that we will, will, we will be better than a computer can be at thinking that stuff. And I, I, I welcome, I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, but this is what, how I feel, and this is what I'm willing to put, like, on video for now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. So I've noticed the performance was better on a functional programming language. Do you think that has something to do with the level of abstraction and the uh, the greater amount of guarantees guaranteed by static analysis? I don't know. Um, I was actually surprised. Like you know, AudioKit has a very Englishy uh, philosophy. We we don't say OSC. We say oscillator. We try to make every all the words explicit. Um, and ChatGPT didn't seem to care much about that. It wasn't so much that it was a, a human language as it was a consistent language. And uh, I only listed Faust as moderate reliability uh, for ChatGPT because it still sometimes shows kind of hokey versions of the of functional functionality. It got the one, it got it right once. Um, so I would, I would like to believe that functional programming is some, just how, somehow better <laughs> because I, I think it's elegant, but I don't, I don't know that for a fact. Um, I'm curious, uh, did you ask ChatGPT to fix that bug in C sound for you? No, I don't even remember what that bug was. That was so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. Great talk, by the way. Thank you. Hey. Uh, what are your thoughts on, because I feel a lot of satisfaction in actually building that thing. Do you feel that there's something lost in the creativity process through just telling the prompt to create something for you? You know, I spent 10 years doing this. For me to say that I don't think that frameworks are a worthwhile thing is, kills me inside, right? I, I would like to believe that all our work is, is valuable. Um, but 
I see the speed of how well it understands us compared to the, how well we've been able to describe to it what to do. It just doesn't, it doesn't compare. Like, I'm, maybe right now we're still feeling we, we can tell it how to make audio better than it can figure out from our words, but I don't think that will last. I think we're going to be out, outperformed. We'll see. I have some, ex some similar experience with you with the, with the prompting. If it's something that I, that I know about and I could be more specific um, and I have some special knowledge, then it's going to do a much better job. To the point what the last guy was saying is there, you're missing something. It's like, you know, you can try to talk to chat GPT. But, and it, you're, you're going to find out where your knowledge breaks down, where you just don't know what you're talking about. You know, I mean, right now if I wanted to write a, a function that I think would take me, you know, an hour to figure out, I'll, I'll spend 15 minutes writing up some pseudocode for it, and it'll, it'll get pretty close. Yeah. So you, know, you don't have to feel guilty about it. And, you know, and if, if it can do something you didn't think that you were uh, capable of, well, then, then you just got lucky. You know, we got a limited amount of time on this planet. There's more fun things to do, for Christ's sakes. And, and by the way, yeah. by the way, to your point, um, when you're telling it, when you're fixing its uh, output, it's not losing that data, you know. Right. <laughs> it's going to remember that it gave somebody a solution to that, and they they tweaked it to this better. So we should we should be talking to our yeah. our AIs and we, we yeah we should don't be afraid of it. <laughs> I mean, it may destroy the world, but in the meantime, we'll do some cool audio things. <laughs> Last one. Hi, Aurelius. Thank Hi, you. Yeah. Sure. So uh, I'm on board with this idea. I, I want. I don't want to f worry about real time stuff. And I, I do think that uh, these uh, computers should take care of that. But. I hope I'm echoing a lot of other people's thoughts that there is a feedback loop because it has learned because ChatGPT has learned these things because someone wrote a bad example and posted it on Stack Overflow 10 years ago. And we can't stop doing that. Uh, so, uh, so there is still a feedback. So we, we still, I guess, continue uh, writing examples because how will we train future well, we are training when we're, we're telling it it didn't do a good job. So that's part of the training process. But I definitely think we should we should be blogging more as audio developers. We should be getting we should be explaining things multiple times. Um, I guess multiple languages doesn't matter that much anymore. But certainly, uh, different people have different takes on how to explain how they uh, did something. In a variety of frameworks, can only help everybody. To to follow up on that. Um, you know, it seems like its understanding of these frameworks are based on good documentation and good code examples that exist online. And I was wondering, kind of based on what uh, Julius was showing, the block diagram of Faust itself, I, I wonder if there's a higher level sort of language it could understand to learn some of these lower level processes, like train it on your entire website. <laughs> Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. I, 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 I have a feeling that AI is going to be better at doing low-level stuff. Other people disagree. Is that it?